Now, on the topic of reverse engineering, that does lead into something really important. I've seen a lot of confusion online about like what code, <clears throat> what Cody is, how Cody works, is Cody legal, like how this like fits together and how these streaming platforms actually work on this system. Sure, um, <laughs> I can I can tackle that. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's we have our own repository of add-ons that we support mm -hmm. um and all of those of course you can install and they're uh done via typically reverse engineering is how the python scripts are written they're all open mm -hmm. source anyone can look at their source code and you can kind of see how it works mm -hmm. now these may or may not violate terms of service agreements but by and large we're trying to do things in the way that the uh media company whose add-on we support does them right. the same way, you know? And that's really what our goal is, is to bring our own experience, but have the same functionality as whatever their own app has, right? Maybe you can select different resolutions versus theirs you can't, or things of that nature. But but most of the time we try to be feature parity um, if it's possible, sometimes it's not. Mm -hmm. um, there's, and and, but we don't ship any media ourselves, right? So right. when you install, when you go to our website and you download our binaries or you install it from Google Play, you pretty much get, just like when you install VLC, you just get a player. You just get something that has the ability. Now, the difference between us and something like um, VLC is that we do have the add-on repo, our own add-on repo that you can install. So you can install our add-on repo and then you can get a variety of different um, uh, media sources that exist today. Uh, hopefully the ones that you pick work, sometimes they don't unfortunately, because of course this is all community driven. Mm -hmm. um, but because we're an open source platform, we really believe in the uh, freedom and the ability for anybody to install what they want. And mm -hmm. so just like on an Android device, you can turn off the ability to um, only install apps from their own Google Play and you can sideload essentially whatever you want, right? Sure. And so what we allow you to do is the same thing and you can install a new repository from a zip file that, that we have not vetted in any way. Um, we have no idea the contents of it. We tell you that when you turn off this mm -hmm. selection course, just like Google does. Um, and at that point, you open yourself up to a variety of different types of add-ons, right? Um, I think, unfortunately, one thing that happened inside of this space is that a bunch of um, enterprising individuals uh, saw that some people were writing some add-ons that um, were essentially just scraping other internet websites that had copyrighted material on them. Right, right. And they built add-ons that... Um, you didn't see any of the ads or anything like that. So, and then other enterprising individuals kind of bundled those together and were selling boxes that had those pre-installed. Right. Now, discounting the copyright infringement issues, mm -hmm. you look at something like that and, and any of us who are technical look at that and we're like, wow, that's a terrible idea for you to buy something like that. It's just going to break tomorrow and then who's going to fix it, right? Mm -hmm. And so unfortunately, we've been overwhelmed in our forums and in our social media with people who have been tricked or knew what they were doing and have bought in, um, devices like this. Mm -hmm. And have then ran into issues with them and they're like, where do I go? Um, so unfortunately there's a reputation problem inside of the space where some people who are non-technical have their only experience with Cody might be through avenues like this. Right. And right. it's super unfortunate. Um, we don't have the money to fight a, uh, um, an image like that in the media and the UK especially has done a fantastic job of publishing stories in literal newspapers about, you know, how to install add-ons and things like of uh, uh, dodgy add-ons like this, mm -hmm. um, unfortunately. So um, there's not a whole lot that we can do about it because it's outside of our control. These are things that live on GitHub. These are things. So just like, you know, there's tons of websites that you can download, cracked APKs and things like that. Mm -hmm. That happens well um, inside of our environment, right? Um, but of course, Google has a few more dollars to spend on brand branding than we do. So um, yeah, and so that's kind of a, a common space. So it always, as soon as somebody posts something like, is Cody legal? You just have to kind of laugh because right. it's like, 
you know, is a car like is a car legal? You could totally it's quite easy to, you know, do nefarious things with a car. But of course, it's it's legal. It's just a, it's just a piece of software and it's an application. And we don't condone all the uses, but we definitely believe in um, freedom and you can use your software however you want. And I mean, that's one of the beauties of open source. Right. And so we try to curate an environment for you that is safe and trustworthy. And when we put our, an add on inside of our repo, we've done due diligence. We've, you know, um, we've had manual people actually go through and look at the source code. You of course are welcome to look at the source code as well. We link source code to pretty much everything. All of them are on GitHub. You could host an add on in our repo that isn't on GitHub, but it's annoying. So most people don't do it. And, um, in general, we want to keep the open ecosystem alive as much as possible. I think that's one of the big things, right? Like we, there's not a whole lot of, consumer focused open ecosystem products out there, right? right? You look at Android, I've been beating up on Android, but Android is a perfect example of an open source operating system that Google Play services is all closed. Well, they recently uh, decided they were going to pull the, I think the phone app and something else from like the open project as well. So, you know, hey, it's open. <laughs> and I mean, Aesop, uh, like ASOP and actual Google, uh, Android are so vastly different at this mm -hmm. point that it's, and on top of that, like you run into the same problems where you run into tons of problems with certification and things like that. Like, I don't know, like Android is my least favorite example of an open source project. And unfortunately it's the most common Chrome OS on the other hand, you know, not to, not to pick up, pick on Google so much. Chrome OS is fantastic, right? Like Chrome OS has done a fantastic job of keeping updates, of having detailed lists on EOLing. But most importantly, out of all of that, they try really hard to run mainline kernels. They try really hard to force people to do open standards. A lot of our video decoding stuff that Cody uses um, are now uh, vendor agnostic because they're standards based. And most of that was pushed by uh, people who were being paid by Google to do that. And basically they were forcing vendors to say, if you don't conform to these industry standards, we won't, uh, like, we'll just drop support for you in the next release. Mm -hmm. We do that to varying effects, but that just ends up uh, building forks. Unfortunately, we have a couple of forks because of that, but like in general, Chrome OS has done a fantastic job and I'm really thankful for, you know, some stewards of that. Um, I'm glad that for some reason, Android team was never like that, but the uh, Chrome OS team has been fantastic in that sense, mm. right? You kind of diverged way off the topic at some point during that. I don't know when it happened, but... <laughs> um, so Okay, so let's talk about a legitimate platform. Let's say Netflix, let's say Hulu. It doesn't really matter which one, just pick your favorite platform. With the plugin to support that platform on Kodi, how does that actually work? Like, just... As like obviously there's gonna be different specifics for the individual plugin, but as like a generic thing, if you wanted to if like, I don't know, company XYZ started the web streaming platform and you wanted to have a plugin on Cody, what would be the general approach of getting that working? So yeah, um, I could definitely take that. So um I think one of the biggest things that we've done in the last few years that has been super important to adoption of these streaming platforms is um, in the web, you have a thing in web browsers, you have a content decryption manager. So how DRM works is they use a content decryption manager in order to decrypt content or a CDM as they're mm -hmm. called, right? Um, luckily for the open source community, the CDM that Chrome uses is open source. So the only thing that's closed source is the binary for Widevine, which is Google's own DRM software, right? Mm -hmm. And so because of the CDM being open source, we were able to basically um, integrate that, reverse engineer that, um, not really reverse engineer because we were able to basically just port it over. Mm -hmm. And so we've ported that CDM now into Kodi onto basically um, all the platforms. And as long as we can find a... Um, decryption library for it. So, you know, in Linux, of course, it's a dot. So in Windows, it's a DLL, right? And we can drop in that decryption. So there's a Widevine helper tool that essentially you install mm -hmm. and it goes and downloads that, um, pulls that off of the internet for you and then installs it. And then you have the ability to install um, any 
DRM enabled streaming service, right? Mm-hmm. So if you were, you know, let's say you were Crunchyroll and um, you wanted to have a Kodi add on, you already have all the technology for it. So it's really, it's just going in and figuring out the, um, the Python front end, right? So one thing that I have experienced from, so I, for a while was talking to content partners a ton, trying to get them to write uh, official add-ons to varying degrees. Um, The HD home run, one that Fuzzard talked about, right? And a few others. And one of the most common things that people mentioned is, hey, you know, uh, we don't want to release an open source add-on because people would be able to steal our content easier, right? Right. And it's like, well, we've re-implemented a web browser. Mm -hmm. So are you going to support a web browser? It's the same thing, guys. Um, I worked with a content partner, which shall rename Nameless, that told me this. And then I opened up their, um, I web inspected their URLs, and they weren't even uh, rolling any of their tokens. So I could pull the URL out of Web Inspector, put it into VLC, mm-hmm. and three months later, I did the same thing when I presented to their CTO. And they were like, ah, that's not a problem, though. And I was like, how can in this same conversation, you tell me that having an open source add-on will open you up for any more concerns when anybody who, everybody has a web browser and can do this in two seconds, guys. (laughs) Like really, like it was unfortunate. And so we definitely run into issues like that from, from, but from a technical standpoint of view, it's super easy, right? Um, We kind of try to make that whole experience easy. So we could support list mode, we could support thumbnails, all of that stuff, like any of our standard add-ons support that today. And we have a look and feel that's already built in, kind of like back in the day, Roku did the same thing where all the Roku apps look the same. And the reason why is because they're, um, there's kind of a unified and easy way to build an add-on that the, that framework's already there. You could, of course, customize that and have your own skin and make it make the look and feel differently. But by and large, majority of the add-ons look the exact same and look very similar. And they're very, very quickly to get up. So if you support Widevine, which if you want to be able to stream media in Chrome, you have to. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to be able to stream media on an Android device, you have to. Uh, that media can be played back in um, Kodi. How many hoops you have to go through to get there? That's a whole different question. Right. So random thing. Netflix doesn't support SSL. They wrote their own secure library because they didn't trust it. And uh they released it open source though in JavaScript. Oh, it's okay, open source. Sure. It's called Missile. It's called Missile. Missile. And um, MSL, I forgot exactly what the extensions are, but somebody, a community member, had to port that library from JavaScript to Python in order to get Netflix working. What? <laughs> Wait, I, I found the repo. Okay, sure. Sure. Okay. Sure, Netflix. Why not? Okay. Hey, at least it's open. It's, I don't know why they made their own thing, but sure, at least it's open. 